Yes, mic check, mic check. Good afternoon. One, two, three, four, five. And speed. Well, Michelle, here you are, brand new star, and I, I have to assume this is the first time you've ever met the press in such numbers as you yes, are today. <laughs> this has to be just uh, shall I say an overwhelming? I don't want to put words in your mouth. But no, <laughs> overwhelming. Very overwhelming and very <laughs> just so pinching myself, making sure I'm not dreaming or something. It's it's so incredible. It's like a fairy tale almost. Everything that's happened. What so far, Michelle, is uh, starting to be just really eye-opening. Saying, "Oh my gosh, I never knew it was going to be like this." Every day, something new happens, and oh, uh, there. I flew to, they flew me to Milan for um, a MIFED festival where they showed Blame It on Rio and they flew me to New York to do the cover of Cosmopolitan and some other uh, things for the film and it's, it's great, I, <laughs> I can't tell you, it's, um, it's a lot of hard work but it's worth it. Now if, if the <coughs> press kit is accurate it says that Stanley Donnan saw a picture of you in W. And from that, <coughs> he invited you to come test. Is that really what happened? Yes. He Actually, I was going to high school, and I was doing a little modeling on the side. And I was lucky enough to um, be chosen to be one of the models for the Arizona section in Women's Wear Daily. And Stanley somehow saw the picture. And it's quite amazing that he saw the picture, too, because it was just a small picture, and there was two other girls standing in front of me. What, what were you, just dressed in regular clothes? Or? Yes, just uh, a dress um, from a, a store in Phoenix, uh, Capriccio's, I think. And so he called New York and he called different modeling agencies to find out who I was and where I was. And finally he located me in Phoenix. And I got a telephone call one day and I uh, flew to Hollywood and auditioned. And then he flew me back the next week for a screen test. From the very beginning, when you really started talking seriously about your doing the role, from the beginning, did you know that there would be some nude shots? Uh, yes, I had read the script, and I went over the script with my parents. And, of course, naturally they were concerned, as I was. So we talked to Stanley Donnan about it <clears throat> to find out exactly what he expected of me in the film. And we really my parents went on good faith that Stanley would use his best judgment I mean from his reputation from from singing in the rain to charade to uh, two for the road I mean <clears throat> it's impeccable and Michael Caine his reputation is is also incredible so uh, they felt they, they just uh, trusted Stanley and it's interesting about those scenes because when I was being Jennifer and in one of those scenes I was so focused on my part that I really didn't realize that, that maybe I was topless. And then as soon as Stanley said cut, I was suddenly very aware <laughs> that I was standing in front of 20 or 30 people and I grabbed a robe and <laughs> went to my trailer. When you first <coughs> saw the, yourself on the screen, I don't know if it was in dailies or if it was not until the film was finished, but when you, the first time you saw yourself on screen, Michelle, and in, in, in the nude shots. How, how did you react? Um, well, when it, the first scene in the movie, I'm talking directly to the camera. I felt thrilled and frightened at the same time. I just, I wanted to, to watch myself, but I wanted to leave and go to the ladies' room at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's such a, a mixture of emotions. It's hard to describe. But it, it, it did it... It, at any time, did it embarrass you to have to do the nude scenes? No, no. Mm -mm. What was uh, your relationship with Michael off the set? Was it kind of fatherly, or did he just treat you like he would treat any other actress? Or wh what was it like? Well, Michael Caine is just an extreme professional, and he really he helped me. He gave me advice whenever I needed some direction. And he really, he made sure that I was all right. He made sure that everything was going smoothly for me. Do you think that, that it was at any time uncomfortable for Michael that, because, you know, his part could have come across as dirty old man. Sure, you know? he had to be very careful about that. Um, 
That's why they chose Michael Caine to do this role, because he's such a fabulous actor that they had the faith in him that he could pull it off, and I feel that he did. Do people tell you that you resemble Brooke Shields or Brooke <laughs> resembles you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, quite a few, almost every day in my life, someone comes up to me and either thinks that I am Brooke Shields or mentions what you just mentioned. I, I take it as a huge compliment. I saw her in person for the first time oh, a, about a week ago at uh, a music awards in Los Angeles, and she is incredible looking. She is. I watched her walk down the aisles, and she just kind of, she didn't walk. It looked like she was gliding. It was incredible. Do you think you look alike? Well, yeah, I, I think maybe um, our eyebrows maybe are the same, but <laughs> maybe we could be, look like sisters or something. Maybe there's a slight resemblance there. But I feel like I'm my own person. I'm Michelle Johnson, you know. Um, you now, uh, apparently, from what we read, you have a fascination about Marilyn Monroe. Is that right? Oh, yes. Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn, I think, I think a lot of people have a fascination with her because she, she came from such a traumatic childhood and she became so successful. It was such a success story that people really looked up to her in a way for that and she she dared to be different which is a lot of young actresses today are look up to that would you like eventually michelle to be known as the marilyn monroe of the eighties well that certainly wouldn't be a bad title <laughs> what a compliment but uh, you would like to work toward that i would like to be known as a great actress. I would like to be known as a good actor. Does the business frighten you at all? Because you're old enough to realize that the business does just gobble people up, and does that frighten you a little bit? Well, I mean, in any business, you have to be aware of, it, of, of things that are going on. And sure, it's frightening as, as anything that's unknown to people is, is thrilling and frightening at the same time. And I, I find that whenever I'm feeling a little pushed or a little on edge, I just, I'll go to the beach or I'll write poetry or I'll just do something where I'm just with myself and can really get to know myself again. Does it concern you that men and y your boyfriends, because I have to assume you have a lot Our of boyfriends. boyfriends. I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Uh, but does it concern you that men now may look at you or treat you differently after they see the film? Concern me. In other words, they may get Jennifer's identity uh, more mixed up with Michelle's and start treating you as if you're Jennifer. Well, you know, I, as a matter of fact, most people that have seen the movie and have not met me think that I'm like Jennifer. That's the way they treat me when they first... Um, are introduced to me or that we, we first spend some time together but then of course they realize that I'm not Jennifer that I'm Michelle Johnson there are some similarities I find that Jennifer is very spontaneous and free-spirited and I feel that that I have a certain I, I'm not I don't feel terribly inhibited by things and maybe it's just because I don't know any better <laughs> but would you be as aggressive with a man as Jennifer not if he was uh, married in 43. I don't go around seducing 43-year-old married men. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michelle, I have enjoyed very much talking with you. I really have. Well, it's nice talking to you, too. And uh, I wish you the greatest success because uh, I think when I looked at you on the screen, I said, now that's a movie star. Thank you.